2024 United Kingdom general elections, a preview. I have this is plus politics. At least 30 individuals with Nigerian ancestral ties, both men and women, will be contesting in the United Kingdom's general elections to fill some of the presently vacant 656 of the House of Commons. The elections are set for Thursday, July 4. The leader of the party that secures the most elected members of the chamber will be appointed by His Majesty King Charles III as the Prime Minister. It is widely anticipated that the Conservative Party, led by Prime Minister Richie Suna, will face defeat to the main opposition, the Labour Party, after holding power for 14 years under five checkered leaders. Joining us is the founder and parliamentary candidate of the Labour Party, Dr. Shola Oni. Also joining us is a UK-based political analyst, Otumba Shimolabo Adeoseni, and Festus Tokumbo, another UK-based uh, development analyst. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Otumba, let's start with you. What is your general take of how the electioneering campaigns going on and uh, some of the predictions that we've been hearing from across the across the media platforms. Your take, your intro. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, let me start by um, saying I'm very happy to have been part of this uh, journey. Uh, I also want to appreciate the uh, chairman, the founder of this uh, political party, who has this kind of. Uh, um, vision. and uh, all I've been doing is to support him and uh, I also believe that uh, those who of us who have been here for years who knows that uh, the reason for this uh, kind of a political party uh, means more than wanting to be a member of parliament it's uh, a, a party that is founded under the belief that uh, uh, Nigerians as many as we are here, that we have no, uh, we have we have no political strength. We don't have any base. We don't have anything to show for. Have been here for many years. Um, we uh, the, the party was formed in the I mean it was form, formed in February this year, and from just just like that, six weeks after after the commission of the party, uh, general election was called. And uh, we, we decided to go for it. Uh, we were unable to field more than one candidate, and the candidate is the uh, Dr. Horatio Lowney, who is here. So, so far, we have been, uh, we, we, he's going to con contest in uh, the, one of the constituencies in Sadok, that's Peckham. And also, I mean, it's one of the biggest uh, constituency in, in Sadok. So we have done all our, I mean, what is possible, we campaign and canvass for votes. We try to uh, show the people of the area there is a, there's a, a new sheriff coming to town. And all what we've been asking people to do is to vote for us because he's an outstanding candidate. So up to yesterday, we, in fact, up to today, we have been leafletting, we have been canvassing, we have been using all possible means to get the people of the constituency to know who we are. Okay, Otuma, uh, at least it's good that uh, quite up front you are letting people know that you are, you are here as a partisan of the Yoruba Party. Uh, the question I asked you, <laughs> the question I asked you was more, was more general in nature, but uh, uh, you have chosen to remove the gloves, and that's, you know, that in itself uh, is a mark of honor, at least. You are not pretending, as uh, some do, 
uh, they pretend to be a political analyst and be speaking uh, in particularly in favor of their partisan uh, disposition. Uh, do we have first on? Is yes. on? Yes, I mean, thank you okay. for that. Uh, I, 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 if you if you to if you're a partisan of any of the political <laughs> political uh, parties in the UK, but I know you are UK based, and I know you featured a couple of times on the show as a development and uh, you know analyst, economic analyst. First of all, what is your what is your take of the electionary campaigns and the direction uh, that the Thank you very much for having me on your show. As my colleague Atali said, the election is coming up on 4th of July. You know, one thing about the UK election, like the Western election, is based on issues. It's, it's, it's based on issues and not like what is being done in Nigeria that is it's based on ethnic city or religious factors. It's based on issues. And as you said, as you have rightly said, there are 650 people, MP that will be elected on the 4th of July from various parties. And, and I'll be, I mean, I'm, I'm in Buckingham Council, and I'll be working with, uh, we have two MP. We have two MP from Buckingham Council here, which are Labour, and I'll be working with this to campaign to go to the field, talk to the electorate, and why they should vote for Labour, and, and like that. So, and the rest of the criteria, hello? Who can hear you? Yes, I guess the background noises are coming from the studio. Okay, fine. So, I mean, various, <laughs> various uh, government uh, polling uh, polling the uh, results have predicted that <laughs> Labour will likely win the election because, you know, the Conservative Party has been for 14 years. They produced mm -hmm. five prime ministers and today everybody is talking about a change because there are a lot of Problems that the UK is facing, both domestic and uh, and international problems, and look like the local election are happening about two months ago. You see, the Labour have the majority of the voter vote, followed by the Liberal Democrat and then the Conservative. Conservative the lost about four, about four hundred of their local, I mean, of their members of their post and local council. So we are very we are very optimistic about it. We know the the I mean, people are willing to vote. That's the Labour Party, because come to think of it, I also asked you a general question and you choose <laughs> you <don't laughs> choose to exhibit, exhibit your partisan disposition. Okay, what well, one well, going to do at this juncture? Uh, uh, but having said that, uh, Dr. Oli, in every material particular, you cannot be expected to do anything, but at least expose your your <laughs> candidature. Yeah, I'm, I'm on an international. Uh, Otumba, uh, Otumba, mute. Please mute your. Please mute your uh, device. That's Otumba. Please mute your device. Thank you, sir. We get to hear your voices a couple of times. I thought it was. I thought it was a studio from Lagos. No, it's not me. It's, it's the studio, but it's me this time. I'll stop. Uh, uh, please yeah. mute your device when you are not on, sir. Okay, you thank, you, sir. thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Oni. I'm listening. I'm here. It is just reasonable for me to ask what are your chances? You are like swimming against the tide. Uh, I guess the... the, the the electoral law in your constituency would have nothing less than 70,000. And uh, how many of them would you think would be voting for you? And what is the likelihood, likelihood okay. of an upset? Okay. I think I should start by uh, explaining how difficult it is for a small party to get a look in in this country. That's because the media has already decided who is going to win or who is going to lose. And they've already decided that parties like uh, Nigel Farage's uh, reform are so, are so sufficiently outlandish 
that they needed air time. So that people like us who uh, are reasonable people who look at the local problems and try to provide solutions for local problems, we have difficulty. In the four, six weeks that this election has been called, we have uh, sent out by hand, talking to people, putting it on cars and so on and so forth, over 30,000 leaflets explaining who we are and what we intend to do. We have also sent out 40,000 uh, copies of the manifesto through the post office. Not only that, we have been on the street. We have had rallies. We have been on the stop. We have been doing what elections are supposed to be about. People, people who say they want to represent you, they go on the streets, they talk to you, they talk all, all, all over the place. But because the big parties have taken the votes for granted, they don't go on the stumps anymore. They don't bother anymore. Uh, you know, they think, you know, everything is done on television, the, the leader is there, and, 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 and that's it. But in fact, a parliamentary election is about representatives. It's about people representing you, not representing their political party, but representing you. I'm going to come to, to our prospects in a minute, but I would like to say this. In the last 40, 50 years, the issues for elections have been exactly the same. Taxes, immigration, national health service, housing, climate change inflation so these problems are recurring every time we tell you that neither the labor nor the Tory party is competent enough to solve the problem if the same problem every election cycle you get exactly the same if you if you go if you have a television program from say 1968 and you compare it to, to today this is exactly the same problem. And it is the same problem, as I said, because the two main parties are too incompetent to be able to deal with what the problem is. What you get on television is two, two parties who are tattooed tattoo between themselves. That's what they do. You are really nothing in depth about anything. And that's where we, we've come in. If you read our manifesto, we have gone in depth into any, everything to explain how in this country the, the, the failure of the government is because they tax and spend. They don't create any wealth. They don't bother to create any wealth. All they do is they take the tax from you, they take your money and spend it for you. That's why they're unsuccessful. It's never occurred to them that they need to create wealth. Yeah. And the way for this country to create wealth, being a small country, an island, is to go outside this country to create the wealth. That's where we come in. That's where parties like us, intellectually, we are above all of them. Now, the question of, of uh, how we are going to do I think we are going to surprise a lot of people. At the end of the day, there are over 70,000 electorates in Peckham. Labour can probably count on 10 to 20,000 of them as their core supporters. Admittedly, they are starting from a very high uh, threshold. They are starting from 10 to 20,000, whereas we are starting from zero. But the fact of the matter is, as I said, they can probably count on only 10 to 20,000 electorates that will vote for them. So the other votes, the other 50 or thousand votes are up for grab. And that's what we've been pitching. Okay. Most of most of labor let me just give me a minute. Most of labor's vote has been personal to Harriet Hammond, who was their MP for 42 years. She's not standing now. So we are starting from ground zero. 
And I think we are going to surprise a lot of people in this election. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Otumba. Otumba. Yes, I'm here. You know, as a political analyst based in the UK, who has seen a number of uh, election cycles, you should know that it is an uphill task to... Uh, to defeat the two major parties uh, when it comes to mustering the resources, uh, reaching the constituents, uh, because like uh, like Dr. Oni has stated, they seem to have some some seeming advantage or advantages. Uh, the media. The media naturally flips after after the main parties, except as rightly stated, uh, melodramatic characters who, who give them a, a, a degree of socialism like the uh, Niger Farage of this world. So, uh, how would you, or how do you think your party that you have openly declared for? Would do against such odds. Uh, thank you, uh, Bala. Uh, the main tool, the main instrument, the main way to win any election in thank Europe, uh, having been around for about 54 years, is uh, when you have uh, a, a selling point, I mean, a selling point like a good manifesto. Offer to the people what you can offer them, what you want to do to win them, to uh, convince them to change their their uh, regular vote has been uh, uh, cast for a particular party the last odd years. Uh, take example of uh, Pekam. Uh, uh, Labour Party has been there the last 42 years. And like the uh, candidate for Pekam, uh, Dr. Olushola Oni, said uh, all what we can do is to spring a surprise and to, to get a surprise is to campaign four times or five times more than the uh, uh, the, the the regular parties there and we have done that i have no doubt in my mind that we can do what we call uh, in many political and, and elections uh, upset we call it upset we can upset we can change uh, just like as we speak, uh, it's, it's not unlikely that uh, many big wigs in the uh, Tories are going to lose their seat. And you'll be surprised that uh, the newcomer in some of their constituencies will be chosen. So it is also likely that uh, uh, the way we have uh, positioned ourselves, all we have, what we have put into uh, in a campaign, all the uh, our manifestos, the conversing and so on and so forth, uh, will afford us the opportunity to generate a kind of offset that uh, we can defeat the incumbent uh, party in Pekin. So it, it is not going to be easy. No doubt about that. That uh, is, is a long shot, but at least we can take care of that. And again, like I said, the main tool we are using is how much campaign we put into it. First of all, uh, it is almost like a coronation for your party. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking the intellectual greening that uh, the leader of your party uh, ought to be subjected to is not getting it because this election seems to be now, an election where the UK electorate, where the UK electorate is just saying, we are so fatigued, we are so tired of the Conservative Party. So first of all, whether you go out or you don't go out with your Labour candidate in your, in your constituency or any other constituency, uh, it does seem that the, that the UK ele electorate uh, seem to have had enough. 
How would you respond to that, Festus? Of course, I mean, people want to change. They believe that the, the Tory party, the Conservative party, have been there for 14 years and things are not getting better. I, mean, I, hope I, pray, I hope I pray that the change will not be the change that one particular country got when they brought into a change that changed them in the direction of the other. Yeah, so as I say, exactly. Um, they want to change, they want a new party. I mean, some of the probably um, uh, voters that have spoke to us, even when they, when they are not willing to vote, they, some of them say, no, we are not going to conservative. And I've been there for more than 20, 25 years. They are tired of conservative party. They, when they, 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 may, they some of them will say, well, we will not vote, or if they are not to vote at all, they consider the Labour Party. And the fact is that if you look at the 2019 election, Labour and Conservative have about 84% of votes of the, the total vote, while the many parties were all less than 16, 16%. So it is obvious, and I mean, as my colleague Afali said, probably in Peckham, they have, I mean, where there are a lot of foreigners, a lot of Nigerians, or a lot of nationals, they, I mean, they can be all state there. I mean, they want the council there. But when you, when you talk, those are the general election. I mean, the point is going to the Labour Party, and they are going to be upset as all, upset, but other people can make, can, can get good vote and make a surprise, it will be Labour Democrat, as for the case during the council election, because they came second, the conservative came third. And if they want to be any coalition at all, if they want any coalition at all, it may, it may likely be Labour and uh, Labour, Labour Democrat. It's not going to be one from conservative. You, you, must be, you must be a very circumspect labor supporter because at this juncture you are the first you are the first labor supporter that i see who in in any scenario of his analysis has proceeded a coalition it is almost going to be a steamroller because you know uh, the labor will only get all its lost seats in the northern part of england uh, the SMP has shot itself in the foot in Scotland, so Labour will inherit uh, some of some of their majority of their seats. So I'm sitting there now thinking, you are a very very conservative analyst. I'm not saying you are a conservative member, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, let me go to let me go to your colleagues, uh, Doctor Oni. Yes, sir. John just on a general note now, it is okay. almost certain that the Labour Party will be forming the next government. It is almost certain from, from the statistics out there, from the polls and projections. I wonder what an ultra-minority member, let's even paint a perfect case scenario where uh, you and the efforts of those who are supporting you where it eventually uh, precipitates an upset mm. and you ultimately made it to the story chamber of the House of Commons. Mm. I wonder what a long voice amongst very aggressive debaters. You seem to me like a gentleman, culture, coming from the background of medicine where uh, politeness and refinement and uh, uh, civility uh, reign supreme. I wonder what your representation will amount to in such uh, a scenario. Just thinking aloud. Thank you, th thank you, thank you for that. But there's also, uh, I mean, you know, people say things, uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. Uh, there are also, uh, there's also the fact that uh, when you put things uh, uh, concisely, precisely, intellectually, sometimes you are able to change minds. Uh, I mean, one of the tasks uh, that we are going to uh, uh, do is to see how we can change minds. For example, when it comes to the question of creating wealth abroad, at least we have thought of that, and we could then use our position, even though we have only a lone MP, 
we can use our position to say, ah, this is how you create wealth. For example, in, in our manifesto, we describe what we call the desert economy. Uh, as you know, the desert has been encroaching on the Sahel for quite some time now. And one of the ways of stopping that is to plant trees across the Sahel. Not only will that help this, uh, reduce uh, the ingrowth of, of the desert, it, it will also deal with climate change because trees eat carbon, and carbon is the cause of climate, climate change. Now, now imagine the scenario where this country spent some money to create this desert economy, which involves planting trees in the, in the Sahel. That is going to create jobs in this country. There will be planners, there will be environmentalists, there will be geologists, there will be water engineers, there will be, be agriculturalists, uh, all sorts of of professions will be involved. That is one way of creating wealth externally, which not only helps this country, will help the Sahel, will also help climate change. Instead of people sitting around and talking about uh, zero sum and all this kind of nonsense, that's where we come in, that we are able to intellectually articulate what we think is the way forward. And that will allow uh, people in government to think. You see, this is another perspective. Can we go down this lane? So I am not faced at all that you might, you know, we might end up with just one MP and what can he do? And I usually give an example of when I was at the General Medical Council as, as the lone black man there. Before I joined the council, there were two registers, one for overseas trained doctors, one for British train, uh, home trained uh, doctors. And the point that I was making in those days was this. When the patient comes to you, the patient doesn't ask where you qualified. The patient is only interested in the competent doctor, somebody to look after you. That's it. The patient does not care where you come from. In other words, the idea of two registers was not to protect the patient. It was for other reasons, apart from protecting the patient. And that argument won the day. So we then ended up with just one register. So that whether you trained here or you trained abroad, you are all one register. So, so I'm listening. How would you respond to a cynic or a skeptic listening to you now and he's saying, this man is wittingly or wittingly espousing a colonization all over again. Go out. No, 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 that's how, that's how, that's my response, will, my response. Let me finish that, let me finish that, okay. let me finish that. Okay. Uh, he, he's speaking to reforestation of the Sahel when ordinarily the Sahel is literally, literally uh, spanning uh, the territories of sovereign nations, when ordinarily mm -hmm. uh, those mm -hmm. sovereign nations would have the sovereign, the sovereign right to decide mm -hmm. how they even want to feel, as wonderful and as, as good as the idea may be, you are speaking as though it must be only UK uh, botanists, UK geologists, you can mm. professionals who will go and do it. And for you, that is wealth creation. How would an average, how would an average country in the Sahel feel that, oh, they, 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 they are bringing money, they are bringing personnel. What about our own project? What about our own uh, professionals who can do it? I'm just okay, can, I, can, can I respond to that? Yes, please. Okay, your professionals are, can do it. They are not doing it. This, this, this idea... This idea that you've got people on the ground to do, they're not doing it. It, it, it. It's really an empty, uh, an empty boast. We've got people to do it, but they're not doing anything. You don't have the money to do it. But you would then throw a dictat, you would then throw a dictat from, from the, from 10 Downing Street. Who said, 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 who said,
Вы думаете, что это? Вы думаете, что это? Вы думаете, что это? Вы думаете, что это? Это не имеет ничего с этим. Я имею в виду, что они не приходят и говорят, что мы будем делать это. Они говорят с вами. Я имею в виду, что все эти глупости, которые мы говорим иногда, они берут деньги от Нигерии с 1950-х. Ни одного единственного Refining was built in Nigeria. They built it in Singapore to take Nigeria oil to Singapore and then import oil for us to. to, to. Is, what, what is that? Is that not worse colonization that they take from us? They take to Singapore thousands and thousands of miles away, refine the thing and bring it to us to, to sell to us at, at, at a high price. This nonsense, as if we are passive people. If you are talking of desert economy, the people, what is wrong with the, with the government of, of that area saying, let us negotiate, let us see how we are going to do things. They are putting, I mean, there are so many things that... that then, then, you must, then, then you must be supporting, then you must be supporting Richard Sunak's idea of, uh, of uh, deporting uh, so-called illegal immigrants. Please, so please, please, come on, come on, come on. Don't let's degenerate to that level. Come on. This, this has got nothing to. Uh, this has got nothing to do with immigration. And if you want to talk about immigration, let's do it now. Sunak, Sunak, let me tell you, Benjamin Sunak Patel, they, they they did it for racist reasons. So don't don't let us mess these words. The United, uh, let me finish. The United Kingdom. Is a signatory to the 1951 Convention on Refugees. It is a signatory to the 1967 Protocol on Refugees, which says that when somebody comes to your land and says I'm a refugee, it is your duty to look after them. It does not matter how they got there, whether they were um, uh, imported by some thieves or, or brought on a boat or whatever it is. That is that is the, what this country signed up to. If this country is not satisfied with what it signed, it can always get out of it. But you can't you can't have a situation. This, this is what happens to us Africans all the time. That you just accept this kind of nonsense because you don't go back to look at what the facts are. The Britain has no right. To deport anybody to Rwanda, none whatsoever, because Britain signed a protocol, signed a convention. If they don't want it, they can cancel it. But as long as you pretend that you uh, will look after refugees, and in any case, if you go down uh, in Peckham today, there are buildings that are empty vast numbers of buildings that have been left empty where you could house refugees once you are dealing with their problems rather than putting them on boots. That's why I said the, the, the policy was racist right from the beginning. There are, there are, places, there are places in Pekin today where you can put house refugees. They don't have to go to, or to be put on a boat. They don't have to be taken to Uganda, to, to Rwanda. Yes. Just I'm thinking listening. aloud now, I'm thinking a racist policy by uh, Richie Sunak, who is of Indian ancestry, uh, Braverman, who is of Indian ancestry, racist against the black or or, or which of the which of the race of color or what? Okay, let me tell you, well, maybe you don't know about Indian society anyway, because they have a, a, a caste system. So don't let's go into that. But the fact of the matter is that what the, what Braverman, Patel, and Sunak are proposing is racist. Their parents came here, but they are now preventing others from coming. They are being used because they have a they, 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 they have a brown face. So don't, don't don't let us go down that path at all. Because I have my own personal views, and I'll, and I'll let you know. When 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 Braverman, when Braverman became uh, 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 Listros's uh, Home Secretary, home secretary. I wrote to her about this. So I'm not what I'm saying to you. I'm not saying it in 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 a vacuum. I wrote a letter to her 
She didn't have the courtesy to respond to it. I wrote to her about this. They're spending millions and millions of pounds wasting it. Well, what is Rwanda to Britain? Rwanda was never a colony. You are sending people to Rwanda. Why? Why? Political conflict. Ukra Ukra Ukrainians are Ukrainians are okay. You can bring Ukrainians here. They're okay, no problem. But from from, from other places, oh no, no, they can't come here. Oh please. Uh, let's 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 uh, let's go back. Altumba Altumba Shil. Yes, sir. How would you respond to if somebody then says beyond the nomenclature? Yoruba party. How would that? How could somebody of your political uh, knowledge be be espousing a candidate of Yoruba party beyond that nomenclature and the fact that your ancestry and your sentiments are in every material particular? Uh, that connected to the primordiality of your of your bodies. How would you respond? I uh, will come across this. Uh, your question. I mean, this is your question. I, I hope you have not distributed it to the people of Peckham because uh, most of them have been asking a similar question. And what we told them is this: we could have called it Bola Bola pa Party in the UK. We could have called it uh, Yanga. We could have called it anything. At the end of the day, the, the vision, the visionary, the person who has spent uh, most of his time doing uh, medicine in this country, law and some other things, must have given it a serious thought that it is not a name for now. For those of you, especially you, when you heard about it, you 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 said you said to me, Oh, uh, you wish you could have been still living here, you will have what probably wrong because you've done it before. You have been there, and you know exactly how it works. So the thing is, um, I, I I don't see any problem in in the name of the party because, like I said, if we call it uh, Anglo, uh, Wasobia, anything, Festus, Festoki, anybody, people will still say to you, "Why did you not add their own uh, preference?" So for me, it, it was uh, the what the part, political party offers. I think is the most important. And, and, and like Dr. Onis said, uh, for the people of uh, Pekka, uh, what they're about to get is an outstanding candidate who will be looking at the interests, their interests, who will be fighting for their rights. He talk about uh, housing. Housing in uh, Pekka is horrible. There's even talk about security. Here we have a, a large constituency like uh, Pekka that has thousands of, I mean, registered voters, 76,000. Also, and they don't have even have a police, a single police station. The only one there has been closed, and you will need to go five miles away to get uh, uh, and to go to get to a police station. These are issues that are going to that we have discussed, and I have no doubt in my mind that if we get the uh, the the position there, these are the things uh, uh, our candidate will restore. We talk about it in the House of Commons, and you know when issues like that are tabled, that should be discussed, and uh, the. The, the thing is, again, uh, for me, we are not afraid. Uh, yes, we come across. And the only people that have been challenging the name are the only Yoruba people, which is fine. But we always said to them, the other, uh, it also has to be said that the, 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 the party uh, is not targeting only Yoruba because, the, the, to be honest, the total number of Yoruba in the, in the constituency, we don't, we don't have the statistics. We only have the statistics for the constituents. So having said that, I don't think if we even have 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 uh, 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 Yoruba that are registered from our uh, typical way we do things, not all of them are going to vote. And if, if not all of them are going to vote, it is not likely that all of them are going to vote one, uh, one uh, Yoruba, Yoruba party. So it, it comes down to the fact that uh, we have been campaigning to the, all the registered constituents of that place. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, is going to pay off. Okay, uh, I, I think at this juncture, uh, I, I need to make some, some, uh, yes, 
some confessions. Uh, I was I was positively I was positively I, I was enamored to have had of the Yoruba party. You know, like Otuba really, really alluded to what I said. Uh, and for me, thank you. Um, for somebody who has read much about the Yoruba diaspora, especially from about 400 years ago, how the Yorubas articulated or used cohesion as an instrumentality of preserving their culture in, in Latin America, from Bahia, from Bahia in Brazil, even when they were being murdered in Argentina, how they supported themselves when Argentina was eliminating their blacks, to how they have preserved their culture in the Caribbean, and now, as we speak, the fastest growing religion in Latin America has been Santeria. Santeria being a religion that is based on, on the mythology of the mm -hmm. And as a student of history, I, I was particularly enamored that a Yoruba man, especially a, where a, an erudite Yoruba man could take that step. Uh, because on one occasion in the past, short of the mutual respect that, you know, Otuma, Otuma and I have for ourselves, there was not one who supported the Yoruba nation because of Sunday Bo. I felt we have been too blessed intellectually for such a character to be espoused as a, you know, as a central figure of identification by Yorubans. I think I went to, from the uh, family, I went over to all the other guys this thing. But you see, when I even looked at the background of the person, I said fully that if I was still fully living in the UK, I probably would have would have taken up the, the government of running uh, uh, on the platform of the party in Woolwich. Because come to think of it, I have a rich antecedent electoral antecedent in that area. But having said that, that's not the issue here now. Let me let me be fair enough. Because on this occasion, I have to be fair. At least the only opposition member we have here now, quote unquote, is that us. That's us. That's us. We don't choke you. No, I can tell you, I can tell you, I'm a mind reader. I can tell you as we speak. He will get home and call his friends and family in in uh, in uh, uh, Peckham. Yeah, good for definitely. But well, tell me if I'm wrong, first us. No, no, no. I've never seen. You know what I talked earlier. I said. I mean, it is possible that the Iraq party could create, could create an offset in uh, in Peckham. You know, at a political battle. So because, are, of, because of first us, because of your own your sentimentalities too. He's also because infected. Because he has been infected. No, not really. Because I mean, election in the UK is about is about the issues, and uh, as a political party, so I tell you, your political manifesto to the voter. You know, you Thank know, you. Is, is, is that is that what it, I was about matter? I mean, I do. I mean, people like uh, this. first us, uh, because you are a development uh, economist. And, uh, you know, we've had you on the show a couple of times speaking to uh, development strategies. How, what do you see to some of the ideas that Dr. O'Neill is proceeding regarding the fact that this is an island, uh, the level to which you can use internal resources to develop is limited. And just as the UK was did historically, going out there, I mean, you know, when when the when the British Empire, when the sun never said so, the British Empire, and that was the period they had the most uh the most they took the most development strikes at the expense of the colonies. From India, the crown jewel of, uh, of the colonies, to places like Nigeria and as small places as the Gambia or the Caribbeans. What is your own take? As a I mean, again. So, Mr. C, I have a lot of reservation about the idea. No, you know, in a, in a, in a survey conducted by Yugov about the electorate, 52 so that they are more concerned by the, about the economy. You know, the inflation rate in UK is about 4.4%. It's about 2% for the UK crisis. That's the why you know, 
Yes, it's but it's a folly, yeah. To focus on what, what, it, 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 it is down to point something, no. It's for four. Because the point because for that two points, my man, not it is not here. The high cost of living, the I mean, the 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 the, 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 the eight <laughs> about eight million people in the UK could not have, have afford mm. for that GP because. The the NHS is not well funded, so those are domestic issues that are more, that are more concerned with uh, for, to the electorate. And when it comes to that of climate change, the UK, the UK is the leading country in climate change. For example, in Stanley, UK was the first region in the world that created a legislation that was meant to reduce the global greenhouse gas emission. And when you examine the several the G seven countries, UK is the most decarbonized in those countries. For example, when you, when you, when you examine the electricity sector. Over fifty percent of electric sources in the UK is from from the fossil fuel. I mean, from the from the renewable energies. But when you examine the whole, I mean, energy sectors, there was over seventy percent produced from energy sector. But among the G seven countries, UK is a leading country, and the government has proposed to phase out uh, and, and diesel cars and petrol cars by twenty thirty. So I mean, UK is taking a, a giant stride in climate change. So what I'm trying to say is that. The electorate are more concerned about domestic issues. Okay, uh, uh, let me let me go to let me go to Doctor Oni now, and, okay. and I really want to take uh, a Philip from uh, Professor C's conclusion. Okay. Uh, I I would want to believe Doctor Oni that domestic issues, uh, as it pertains to your candidature, will relate to issues in your constituency. Yes. Uh, it will relate to issues in your constituency. Yes. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking the per capita income in your constituency is uh, relatively in the UK and across uh, across Western Europe uh, seemingly low. That's number one. And that also is a function of the fact that uh, the level per capita of education, forget about the fact that some of you, that some of you people who started from this end, especially those of you from some bookish, quote unquote, bookish and the phone country, like Nigeria, like, like southern Nigeria, and uh, Ghana, and say some of you have made good for yourselves by acquiring multiple degrees, uh, medicine, surgery. From medicine surgery, I wonder how you, you even took the pain to go to law school, law, and other, I didn't say, or Tumba from, uh, from uh, insurance, logistics management to law. So, some of you, but the general average, the per capita in your constituency is such that, especially the Gen Z's, the youngsters, they need skills. They need, I'm not hearing you talking to that. Oh yeah, oh, 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 I, 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 I have been talking to that, and th th there are fundamental issues, okay? Uh, because what what happens in in, in the community? In fact, I was I was discussing this with somebody at, uh, a couple of days or so ago. That when you see the statistics of how well government is doing. It is not the reality of what people on the ground are feeling. You can do all the statistics you like, but the reality is what the life of the people on the ground are. Part of the problem, and why you need political parties like mine, is the fact that people are making decisions for you. People are saying, this is what your school should be like. This is what policing should be like. This is what your housing should be like. They are not asking you what you want your policing to be like, or what you want your housing to be like, or what you want your schools to be like. The decision is being made for you. There's nobody holding a town hall and asking the people of Peckham, what do you want? But when, as I've been going around talking to people, and see the difference between what they want and what they are being provided. The difference between what they want and all the things that the politicians are talking about. I think it was somebody, who, uh, I, I can't remember which politician who said that, that inflation, inflation is created by government, not by people. 
inflation is created by government, not by people. So all the economic disaster and so on, it's not caused by the people, it's caused by government itself. And what happens when somebody else decides for you what, your, what aspects of your life you'll be, is that you end up the way we have ended up with increased crime. Your children are not doing well at school. And in fact, you, you know, when black children go to school, all the teachers are interested in, can he play football? Can he run? Can he jump? Not can he think. Those things will change when we have a political party that shines some light on our, on, on our community that says, we too can do this. We too can do this. Once others know that we too can do this, they will listen to us. They will not come and build houses on our land and houses that we cannot afford to rent or to buy. So that slowly, slowly, you are turning Peckham into East Linton, into, into central London. Because the people here cannot afford the new housing. You call it affordable housing. Uh, affordable uh, by who? Hello, candidate Oni. Uh, because yes. uh, we must grill candidate Oni well enough to show that uh, uh, whether you, you know whether you are abiding, I, I hope you are not a Trump. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm hearing, are you against the gentrification that is happening? As I'm talking to you now, I'm literally speaking from your constituency. And given what I've uh, given what I've known of Peckham, say in the last 30, 35 years, or even up to about 20 years, I've seen enormous amount of gentrification, enormous amount of uh, enormous amount of uplift in the aesthetics of the environment. Are you against that or what are you speaking about? you remember how I started? I said it is what the people on the ground feel is the reality. What you are talking about appeals to you. Does it appeal to the people on the ground? Because what the people on the ground see is that they are being priced out of living in pattern. That's what they see. You see the beauty, you say, oh, well, you know, it's like a New York out uh, uh, the outline now is, is beautiful, is this, is that, is, is that what the people of Peckham see? They see differently. Because I talk to them, and they tell me exactly what I've told you. That they take our houses, they demolish it, they put this, this uh, uh, apartment uh, blocks. Please, please educate me, please educate me. Uh, yes, coming yes. from the background, coming from the background of somebody who, who used to live in the UK, who uh, understands how this society functioned and how some of us were ushered into the opportunity of right to buy, you know, growing equity on some of the council flats that we ultimately own. If anybody chose to sell, that person was not, would not have been pushed out. That person would have earned good money from such a transaction. Mm -hmm. So, and some have chosen not to sell and just grow the equity on their residences. What mm -hmm. could be wrong with that? I, I didn't say anything was wrong with that. Let me, let me, let me remind you of what I said. You, you are looking at a minority where everything looks rosy. I am telling you about the people that I've met on the streets and I'm talking to they are reality they are reality i can see i i, I you know I, I have an idea of the sort of uh, place i would like to live in and so on and so forth but that's not the point the point is what the people on the ground say they want that's that's the reality and it's the same thing with the national Health service as well what do they, can... they say they want that's what i'm telling you that they are building houses that they cannot afford to buy, they cannot afford to rent. That's it. So, so you build something, you say this is affordable housing, but they can't afford it. 
which is a general phenomenon across the across the Greater London area. It doesn't, doesn't matter where. where it doesn't matter where it is. I I can only tell you what the people of Peckham are saying, and it is really it is it is important for politicians. I mean, I, I know I'm not you know I'm just a, a new fight when it comes to politics. But it is important to listen to what people on the ground are saying. That's my job uh, as, as a doctor. It's an orthopedic surgeon. I listen to what my patient is saying before I offer treatment. I don't okay. just speak, I don't just see the guy and say this is the treatment. Our time is quite well spent. Oh uh, yeah. Otumba, uh, in, in in ten seconds, Otumba, your closing remarks. <laughs> First TV, TV. Hello, Otumba. Is, is Otumba there? Okay, first us. First us, your closing remark. Okay, thank you. I think I will be the Uber party, the good luck in uh, Peckham. Thank you. So, uh, they, I, mean, for, I mean, I listen to you and I'm very. So, at the end of the day, but so the election. At, at the end of the day, first us. At the end of the day, your own neighbor has a caveat when it comes to Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about Peckham. Generally, I think the election is Labour Party. I mean, every, every party. Yeah, but when it comes to Peckham, you would rather want your your Omoru Abi, Omoru Abi brother to fly. You see, that's not fair. That is not fair. And and go, and go and read about that's not go and read about how the Yoruba people said to have a very very high community in Bahia in Brazil. That you would still do your ekugu, you will still sell like a car, you will still sell. You see, you see you now. Uh, you are being unfair. You are being unfair. I, 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 I do the sign of the cross to you, your rubbers, for whatever it's worth. Now, but now, I have to confess. I have to confess too. I have to confess too. I was positively first. First, I was not peculiar to you. I was also positively enamored. Yeah. I was tripped, and I was. I wouldn't know where that primordial instinct came from that this was what supported. But yeah. I have no, I no longer hold the vote in the UK because uh, my name should be somewhere on the electoral register, but I don't see myself voting on Thursday. I okay. wish you all. Can, can, can I quickly, just before you go? Yeah, no. you know? I, I, just want to, I just want to appreciate uh, uh, Plus TV for giving us this opportunity uh, because uh, we are going to. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, at least, at least you and many other Nigerians, whether here or not, uh, are going to uh, have uh, for the first time in many years a voice. Uh, yesterday, I was watching the te on television. I saw Sunak going all over the place, going to the Sikh uh, uh, temple, going to different Indian temple, and so on and so forth, seeking for votes. And the same thing uh, the Labour leader was doing. They gone to the the Jews, the everywhere. As a candidate going to differ, as a candidate going to differ, if I can pull in the Oh yeah, oh oh yes. I've, I've been to churches, I've been to mosques. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. This is a wrap.